Hello. How are you? I'm excited. Today's going to be a very special program for you. Because I want to, as we are, I was thinking about what is it that I can do that can help many people who are going through a tough time right now. And so this program is for that. There's a song years ago that I enjoyed very much. Would you believe it? Now, this is not for the millennials because this song is 50 years ago. And when I hear it, it makes me want to bust a move. <laughs> All right, this is back in my disc jockey days. And when I was the man in Columbus, Ohio, Les Brown, the man about town, LB, Triple P. I've been thinking, and, and what I want you to do is express your greatness. Express your greatness. I was at the airport, and the guy called my name, Les Brown, and I came up to the counter, and it was an a, a airline that I didn't usually fly, and he, he upgraded me to first class. I said, thank you, sir. And then I went in, I sat down, and I said, now, that's odd. I can't have that many uh, mileage on, on this flight and this airline, so I went back up to the counter. I said, do you know who I am? He said, no. You, you've never heard any of my motivational materials? He said, no. You haven't read my book? He said, no. Well, you know, my mother told me, never look a gift horse in the mouth. But why did you upgrade me to first class? I don't usually fly your airline. And he said, because I can. Wow. Mm. because I can. I got up this morning. There are people that need motivation. There are people that need hope. There, there are people that need to hear a word. There are people who need to be encouraged. God put me here to motivate and inspire. So you know why I'm giving this away? Because I can't, but wait, you can make money off that. Listen to me. I'm here because of God's grace and mercy. You're listening to someone and looking at someone who's been dealing with fourth stage cancer for 29 years. Under the, not auspices, no, under the auspices of God and being treated at the Cancer Centers of America. My record reflects Les Brown. You see my record. Fourth stage cancer metastasized to seven areas of his body, including his spine. That's what you will see. I've already been paid. I've made a lot of money. And listen, there is no duplicate. There is no price you can put on a life. God has blessed me. I'm here because of his grace and mercy. And I'm here. He, he, he put me here to serve you. The greatest among you will be your servant. I want this to be a part of your strategy. I'm building a community of, of collaborative, achievement-driven, supportive relationships. What does it take? And listen to me. As you, I want you to think about your goals and your dreams right now. You start listening to this now. It's going to change your life. It, it, it has created several millionaires around the world. How? Because you have to have a million-dollar mindset. As a man thinketh, so is he. As he continues to think, so he remains. Your, 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 your thinking has brought you to where you are. Upgrade your thinking and it will take you where you should be. So I've earned millions of dollars. So when you hear my voice, you're hearing someone who's earned millions. And I'm speaking it into existence into you. So you remind yourself of that as you listen. Have the faith as you listen. Have the expectation as you listen. This is going to be your greatest year ever.
This will change your mindset. It will expand your vision beyond their circumstances, beyond your adversities, because you'll be listening to someone who used to bathe in the sink downtown in Penobscot building in Detroit, Michigan. You'll be listening to someone who has hid in a closet from the janitorial staff in the middle of the night when they came in to clean my office when I was in pursuit of my dream. Yeah, you know, I've been through some stuff. In order to still be here, you got to know some stuff. You got to know how to navigate this thing called life. I don't know you. I can't see you, but here's what I know about you. You have greatness in you. Here's what I know about you. You don't have to give me a dime for what I'm sending you. God has paid me in full and some. A friend of mine, Vi Clark, who died, she, she, she has a quote that she gave her daughter to give me. She said, when I die, because of the life I live, life don't owe me no change. I can say that for myself. When I go, when I die, when y'all here, Les Brown is out of here. But guess what? Life don't owe him any change. Why? He lived full and he died empty. He robbed the cemetery of his voice. He robbed the cemetery of his story. He robbed the cemetery of his passion to serve. He robbed the cemetery of his greatness. He robbed the cemetery of people who were living a mediocre life. And when he spoke, they were inspired because he knew he could do nothing of himself. But with God, all things are possible. I know what it is to go through foreclosure, to be evicted. I know what it is when you don't know where you're going to get your next bill from. You, you don't have enough money for bills. You got to make a choice, trying to make $5 go where $50 need to go. I know what it is to say, God, let me know you real. Give me a sign. And the sign didn't show up. And then and people say to you, oh, he might not come when you call him, but he'll be right on time. If you don't get out of my bed. <laughs> no, let me tell you something. Oh, plan two, so work up in here now. No. People need to know. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. They need to know, therefore, taking you the whole arm of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. See, in order to get something, you got to go through something. Oh, this is not the end for you. This is just a new beginning. Oh, no, no. There, there's a reason that we are facing this face, this place where we are right now in life when you have a, a, a gut-wrenching uh, a teeth rattling experience we run to God only to discover that it's God that's doing the shaking listen to me this is your time don't focus where you are no you focus where you are going get a vision of that and you listen to choosing your future it's possible. And I'm saying to you, as you look at yourself, look at situations that you're facing right now, if anybody at any point in time were evicted, uh, faced a, 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 a foreclosure, lost their job, their business went under, or a doctor looked at them and said, you're terminal, and they survive, then it's possible that you can survive. The next message there that you're going to receive, it's necessary. See, if you're casual about your dream, your dream will end up a casualty. You've got to decide that my dream is a non-negotiable. You've got to decide that. And, 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 and you go at it with a hunger in order to make it right now. With all the stuff that's happening right now, this, this global asylum, mental asylum that we're in right now, with the craziness that's going on right now, in order to break through, as Dr. Stan would say, you got to be hungry. People that are hungry are relentless. People that are hungry don't take no for an answer. People that are hungry are unstoppable. You got to be hungry. Those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, right thinking, right words, right feelings, right relationships. 
and right actions shall be filled. Got to be hungry to make it right now. You got to decide. It's necessary that you upgrade your relationships. And, and as Dr. Kareem Ellis would say, give a pink slip to all the negative, toxic, going nowhere people in your life. Give them a pink slip. There's no place for them in your life. I don't take a phone call unless it's positive, unless it's productive, unless it's purposeful, purposeful, unless it's profitable. It's got to be positive. I don't deal with negative people. They bring too much drama with them. I don't care if it's my children. No, I ain't got time for it. Got to be positive. You, 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 you know, something else Kareem said. He said, your life is not a democracy. It's a dictatorship. People don't get to weigh in and bring drama to you unless you give them permission. It's a dictatorship. You call the shots. So I call the shots. I don't deal with negative people. Then so that's here's the other one. Got to be productive. As you look at your life and go, anybody that's not productive, anybody that's not producing value for you in your life, anybody in your life that's always there when they need you, but when you need something, you can't find them. No, no, don't don't bring them. Life is like an elevator. The higher you go up, you got to stop and let some people off. Let go or be dragged. All right? It's necessary that you do that. And it's necessary that you spend time with you getting quiet, getting still, without developing yourself, without working on yourself, without letting go toxic negative people, without a clear vision of what you want to manifest in your life. You don't want to do that. No. So you you, you got to work on you. You got, got to get quiet. Most of us never achieve our greatness. Most of us even don't know who we are because of weapons of mass distractions. Distracted by foolishness. I can't tell you the number of people. Oh, did you see the fight between Roy Jones and Mike Tyson? Hell to the no. What am I? Why am I going to be sitting around watching that? What value would that bring in my life? Hello? No. You've got to use your time wisely. It's necessary that you get serious about life, that you put your foot down and say, I'm not going to be poor anymore. I'm not going to stay in a relationship where I'm dying rather than living anymore. I'm not going to be a fat blob anymore. No, I'm not going to be unhealthy anymore. No, I'm not going to be on a job where they pay me just enough to keep me from quitting and I work just hard enough to keep from being fired. No, I'm going to live my calling. I'm not mentally fit to have a job. A job is what you get paid for. A calling is what you're made for. I'm going to do that which God made me to do. I'm going to bet on me. I'm going to take a chance on me. You have something special, but you got to put your foot down to discipline yourself. Keep your word to yourself. Honor yourself. Honor the greatness in yourself. This thing called life is serious. You can't be wishy-washy. Be becoming successful is a slow process. And listen to me, becoming successful is a slow process. Developing your greatness is a slow process. But quitting doesn't make it faster. You got to decide. It's necessary that you, you put your foot down. You said, no, I'm not quitting. I don't care how many no's I get, how many rejections I get. I don't care how many people tell me I can't do it. Even if, if I'm not going to even listen to myself. Because I don't have enough knowledge to know what I can't do. Sometimes you got to be intelligently ignorant. No. You got greatness in you. And sometimes you got to fight yourself. 
the fourth dip rule is, is not in our stars, but in ourselves, but that we are underlings. What lies before us and what lies behind us is of small consequence to what lies within us. What did he mean by that? Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. But in order to bring it out, it requires discipline. Discipline? Yes. Do what you know, not what you feel. I got some commitments of what I want to do health-wise. Develop a plan of action to be here. Create an agenda for your life. I have an agenda for my life. Before I go to sleep at night, what I want to get out of the day. The average person is just trying to get through the day. Before you lay your head down, make sure you know something tonight that you didn't know yesterday. And write out what it is you want to achieve tomorrow so that you're not among those willy-washy people. It's necessary that you get serious, that you put your foot down, and that you kick your own behind. Did you say that? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I've, I've done that. So what, what was I thinking when I did that? Guess what? I wasn't thinking. Yo. You got to monitor you. You got to look at you and hold yourself accountable because wherever you find yourself at some point in time, you made an appointment to be there. You made in the likeness and image of God. You've been given authority and dominion over everything on the face of the earth. And you will never exercise authority and dominion over your life until you exercise authority and dominion over what you are not. Most of us are living a life, a misplaced life, a life that's not us, and we don't even realize it. Dr. Carter G. Woodson, would you please come forth, please? Yes, if you can determine what a man shall think, you never have to concern yourself with what he will do. If you can make a man feel inferior, you never have to compel him to seek an inferior status, for he will seek it himself. And if you can make a man feel justly an outcast, you never have to order him to go to the back door. He'll go without being told. And if there's no door, his very nature will demand one. Hmm. I'm talking about the coronavirus. Let me tell you a virus we got to get rid of. HIV, hood infected virus. AIDS, addiction to incarceration and death syndrome. Those are two viruses we need to get rid of too. Our children are listening to us. Our children are watching us. We all can make a difference. I think Horace Mann had a point. We should be ashamed to die until we've made some major contribution to humankind. You know how many people die every day and two weeks later there are no conversations about them because their lives were so inconsequential? Born with greatness, made in the likeness and image of God, been given authority and dominion over everything on the face of the earth, and they never exercised that authority and dominion. They died at age 25 and didn't get buried until they're 65. I didn't wake up and start living until I was 37. I'm here because of God's grace and mercy. And somebody saw something in me when I didn't see it in myself. Sometimes you have to believe in somebody's belief in you until your belief kicks in. Listen to me. You've got greatness in you. Don't you judge yourself based upon your circumstances. Don't you judge yourself based upon what you have lost. Don't ever say, oh, I have lost everything. That's a bold face lie. The fact that you can say it, I, I, I've lost everything. That's a lie. People who've lost everything can't talk. People who've lost everything are in a cemetery taking a dirt nap. You are still here because of God's grace and mercy. And if you created it once, you can create it again. So help me. This new craziness that we got out here. No craziness. It's, 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 it's insane. And guess what? Everybody is reachable, teachable, and redeemable. I used to be crazy too for a long period of time. And I'm not playing with too much of a full deck now. All right, Tyrone. See, that's what I'm talking about. Who talks to squirrels? I got issues. You have something special. You have greatness in you. And I'm crazy enough to believe. 
I'm crazy enough to believe that God is not through with me yet. And that I'm going to give you what I have. I'll give you my products. I'm going to create a community of collaborative achievement-driven relationships. You can't help everybody, but those who have here, let them hear. I'm crazy enough to believe that some of you who hear me now, that life is God's gift to them and how they live their lives is their gift to God. That's the greatest gift that you can give all of us. It's not about the materialistic things. It's not. I know this to be true. Mike Williams, thank you, brother, who wrote the book called The Road to Your Best Stuff. He led me to myself. Sometimes you have to believe in somebody's belief in you until your belief kicks in. We're losing too many people, too many children. And I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. I just thought about that. I'm still here this morning. I'm still here. And I'm grateful. Let's give people hope. Let's provide hope for people that are feeling hopeless and helpless and powerless. This will strengthen them. God has given me a gift to speak. And he didn't charge me anything. He didn't charge me anything. How do you know how, how to do what you do? I don't know. God, grace and mercy. That's all I know. If you want to know how I got here, come on, Luther Barnes. God's grace. I wish I could say, oh, I got it like that. No, I don't. But these are tears of gratitude. I'm so thankful. I, I want people who have a spiritual calling. Hmm. So that they don't give up. You have something special. You have greatness in you. That's my story. I'll stick it to it.